Hey, so today I'm going to demo the Handtech USB scope. So this is the 6000 series 6254BD. It's 250 megahertz, they say, a one giga sample per second. That's uh, with one channel enabled. So if you use all four channels, then it uh, only does a quarter of that. On the back, it's got a signal generator and the USB plug. This is a 25 megahertz signal generator. It's got a few accessories here. There's this uh, sort of grabber one times probe, and then it's got a couple of those and a couple of regular probes here that do one and 10 times. It's got this B and C cable, and then a couple USB plugs, got the regular, and then this one with two power connections on it. Uh, there are two inputs, one for extra power. So I have noticed, depending on which plug I plug it in on my desktop, Sometimes it doesn't get enough power, so you might need that. And they go for about 260 bucks right now on AliExpress. What I'm going to do is I'll just connect the signal generator here to channel 1. And then we can go over the computer. I'll show you software that comes with it and then some code that they have. They have some old code from Visual Studio 6. Um, and I updated some of that to run on a Visual Studio's 2022 project, and then also made some Python code. And um, I tried to do Excel, but that didn't work very well. So I'll put it on a repo. You guys can check it out. And if someone's feeling uh, adventurous, you can see if you can get the spreadsheet one to work. Here we are. So to get the software, you go to handtech.com and downloads. And then you can select under the product model this one is the 6000 BD series. And you can see application software, you get the software. Uh, the driver doesn't have anything, but if you do manual, it's got the driver and the manual. And then the SDK, here's the one that I downloaded. So if I try and start the software with it plugged into my front USB port, it says search for USB device. So it's basically not recognizing it, and that's because it doesn't have enough power. So I'll switch it to the back now. So now it's running, it's in the back USB port, so you can see it's got enough power. And if we change to the DDS here, this is the function generator. Turn it on, give it a, do the 17 kilohertz. And then if we switch back to this one, now you can see on channel one, because we've got channel one connected to the signal generator, we've got the signal in here. So it's got a bunch of standard buttons and stuff for scopes here. I'm not going to go over all of that right now. I think we'll just switch over to the repo and I'll show you how to connect and control it with some code. So the first thing I did to figure out how to connect to the scope was get their SDK downloaded. So this is their folder and it's got some manuals. Uh, this one here is the main thing you want to check out. The English. Um, it's got a couple of DLL files in here. Uh, it's nice they put 64 and 32 bit. If you go in here, this is the main one. This is the hardware DLL. And then this one just has a couple of uh, things in it and this measurement and this display. Uh, but if you go back and get the manual, that shows up here. It's got a bunch of all the functions and everything you can call for the DLL, and it's got the DSO, which is the scope, and the DDS, which is the function generator. And there's lots of information on that. The tricky part, it turns out, is getting all the variable types correct, because they have a couple of structures, relay control um, and um, hardware control, I think is the other one, that you have to get set up right. And it's kind of complicated passing the structures, sort of like objects to and from the DLLs, and if they're not perfect, then it'll just um, either give you an error or give you no error, and it just won't do anything. So in this code demo folder, they've got the older versions, Visual Basic, and then this cute one, Lab View, and this C one here. So I started with the Visual Basic one, and I was trying to translate that uh, directly to Python, and I wasn't getting any results. I couldn't configure it correctly, and I couldn't read the data. So I ended up working on the C1 a little bit, but I got to give a shout out. Uh, 
what got me really going was this other guy's repo here. And I just copied that and started using that for um, the basis of what I did over here. So this is my repo if you just go to github slash circuit analysis slash hand tech and then there's this folder here USB scope and then these folders here. So this is the official hand tech one that I was just showing you. I just put that in here for kicks and then this C++ one is the one I actually cloned uh, the other guy's repo and started with that and then from there I copied that into the Python here. So I'll do a quick demo of those two and show how they work and then the Visual Basic one I copied their original code and then used what I learned in this in an Excel spreadsheet and I just couldn't quite get it to work but I'll just show you why that doesn't work and uh, here we go. Here's the Python code and we can go run start debugging and this one you can see is set up with the 32-bit uh, I got this to work on both of them so here we go matplotlib it makes a sine wave captures the sine wave um, what you can do here if you want to switch to 64-bit Python you can comment these two out you have to have them both installed but if you go run add configuration then you can change the paths here to the which uh, Python you're using so I've got them kind of commented out here so you can you just switch the comments and now it's pointing this built-in part to the uh, save that the other Python version so now if we run it here it's on the 64 bit and you can see that'll do the same thing so we'll go through this code real quickly here they're all the same so I'll just do it on the Python one so we start off here um, it's using C types in Python to communicate with the DLL. So here we're loading the DLL into this object using C types. So when DLL is a, from the C types. And we create these two structures here. So these are the relay control and the data control. And these are the complicated ones that were causing it to not work at the beginning. You gotta get these exactly right. And then you have to call the correct variable types using the C types library. So they're using word and bool and the bool is also uh, u long apparently uh, the way that they're using it so then you come down here initialize the variables I've just got a bunch of constants here doing stuff so we're setting the signal generator to 17 kilohertz one volt and then there's a bunch of things we're enabling all four of the channels here uh, channel mode and here I've got arrays set up that have all of the time divisions in here so you can give it a number uh, the way it works is you give it like a time division number or a voltage division number and that corresponds to a lookup table and then I've just put these arrays as lookup tables so if you put this number as an index into this array it'll give you back the value that way you can calculate stuff later so then zeroing the channel uh, 128 is zero for the 8 bits uh, number and we go through a bunch of stuff down here this here is setting up those two uh, complicated data types so this would have been a lot easier if they hadn't done that and everything was just direct parameters into the functions but they did so we have here in the relay control uh, this enable you know volt per division channel coupling and you have to get this stuff uh, correct here in the way that the types are passed otherwise it doesn't work so you've got the trigger a bunch of different settings for these that's how you get all the time and the voltage settings then we're finding and initializing the device so the first thing you have to do here is find the device and you can connect up to like 32 of these to one computer apparently so you go through here and you do this uh, search device and I'll just mention right now the way that this C types library works is you call uh, the function here but the way that I've had it set up here is assigning a new variable to that function because uh, you have to set up the argument types and the response types so it lets you kind of define that as you go if you don't do it sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't so I just uh, define them for everything so the arg types is just 
this list here that's got the different types in it because you can have lots of arguments and then since it's only got one response it just has one response type here and then to call the function you call the function here that you've redefined and you give it the arguments now which have to follow these arg types so that's searching for the device and then you're looking here through 1 to 32 um, or 0 to 31 actually and that's uh, finding the device index and I notice when you unplug it and plug it back in sometimes it'll change the index so you do have to do this otherwise it's not always just going to give you zero as the current index it'll change it to one or two or something even if there's only one plugged in so then you do the DSO init hardware and you have to do that before you run either the function generator or the DSO so even though it's called DSO it's for the DDS as well and then here I have the first thing we do is set up the function generator because that way uh, we'll have a signal to look at with the scope so each of these sections here is calling one of the function generator commands and then printing out the result and a lot of times these functions will output a zero if it fails and a one if it succeeds but I noticed that these DDS functions will basically just return the value you passed to them so they're a little different uh, so like I was noticing you know if you give it a zero offset it'll return zero and that doesn't mean that it failed that just means that uh, you gave it a zero so these seem a little different uh, you can go down here you're setting the frequency amplitude offset and then you enable it and that's for the signal generator so for the scope we have just these don't all make a whole lot of sense but it's just kind of this is what some of the examples were and what you have to do so set sampling rate and this is where you're giving it this pointers to the relay control object and uh, that data control as well and then the thing with C types is you could put by ref in here as you know by val or by ref by ref would be the pointer but it seems like it automatically passes these objects by ref so you don't really have to write that so here it's it's talking about the pointer here and then I, you just give it the object and it automatically uh, does it by ref and go down here so there's uh, one for each channel of this function here setting the vertical position and then we have uh, the trigger here now to collect the data there's this start collect data function and then after that you have to pull it here to see if the data is ready to collect so this here is doing like a, a get state and it's the second bit in what it returns so that's why it's being added with a 2 so when the second bit flips from 0 to 1 then it's ready so um, it just sleeps for one millisecond until that's ready and then down here it reads the data and it does this with a 4096 uh, array and this is a little bit tricky so the way that it works is you pass a pointer uh, into this read function and it's a pointer to the very first element of the array and uh, then it just kind of reads that and uses that as a starting point and the device just dumps all the data starting at that point into the memory so then down here I've got some new arrays and these ones are changing these values that were read back which is just a number you know from the 8-bit number 0 to 255 and this is converting those into a voltage so you got things like your probe multiplier one or ten times you're adjusting it here by your zero position your volt multiplier here that you have your voltage setting and then your volt divisions and that's all divided by 256 and down here we have the matplotlib part where it just dumps that to matplotlib and generates the plot so now let's check out the C plus version so the C plus is here in Visual Studio's community 2022 follows basically the same format same constants and such relay control and then um, 
that's got a couple extra things down here this calibration section I didn't really deal with that at all but apparently it does have an onboard calibration thing so you can read that out and you can reset that if you want to calibrate it so it's got all the other functions down here setting up the signal generator here same functions setting up the oscilloscope here reading the data and then when it's done it just oh, this should be a comment here it just dumps the output each line to a text file and then it closes the file so what you have to do when you run this you get the output here completed successfully and then have to look in here hand tech tester folder you have this output data and this is just a dump of the points here and we can copy that what I did was made it in the same format as this uh, spreadsheet for the Visual Basic one so if you just go in here right click and paste the values then you'll see the plot now the funny thing with the spreadsheet is now that we've run it with the other program this one will refresh and show the exact same plot here uh, but if I unplug the scope and plug it back in then it totally fails and the reason for that is those two complicated structures I just couldn't get them correct in this one so if we do alt F11 here this is the visual basic code you can see here I've got these relay control and data control structures here and I think it's just they use an unsigned long as a data type and VBA doesn't have an unsigned long I think that might be the problem because basically if I pass this object as an empty one in the C program it gives the same kind of result here it's, it's basically all the same number and it's kind of like this uh, read length is just one so it's just reading one number and using that for everything but I have this set up doing all the rest of the stuff uh, that the other two scripts are doing so it's almost there I think I guess every function where it's sending one of those objects the data control or the relay control it's not really passing the correct readable data to the scope so that's enough for now um, future things I guess besides getting the visual basic to work it might be kind of cool to do a sort of real time where it was continually redrawing the waveform like the software does I noticed they do have this HD display DLL so they've actually got a DLL with some draw grid and draw wave functions in it so I guess I could look into that and uh, they were using that in the original visual basic code uh, example in their API so I guess this would help you somehow get the uh, waveform drawn quickly. So I think that's probably pretty good for today. I've um, been meaning to figure out how to control that hand tech for a while. It's definitely not skippy. It's a real pain, but it is possible. And I think it's pretty cool scope for some projects in the future. So hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.